Hi, and welcome to my series called Waterloo Sunrise. A few weeks ago I arrived at this particular station in London called Waterloo Station way too early. So I decided that um, I'd try an experiment and try and trace my PC connecting to the public Wi-Fi service. Once I'd got the trace, I thought this would make a great basis for an introduction to packet analysis. And so what I'm going to do is run through a series of videos just explaining some of the content of the trace that will give just that flavour and that hopefully pique that interest in the whole concept of packet analysis. So let's crack on with this. The first thing is you can download the trace file from the Tribe Lab website. You do this by signing into the site and if you don't have an account it's very easy to create one and as I tell everyone we won't spam you. And uh, Once you're in the site you'll get this particular page and um, we have lots of different sections in the site and the section you're interested in is this one, Network Trace Analysis. Once you're in that section, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, down, 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 you'll come to this area here, Waterloo Sunrise Worked Examples. So here's the trace file, you can download that, simply click on it and save it into um, into a directory and away you go. You don't have to have the trace file by the way, you can obviously simply watch the video. Here's the trace file and we have an initial entry which has been received by my PC which is simply a multicast from probably a router checking if uh, my PC wants to join a, a particular multicast group. So we're going to ignore that one for the moment because what I'm really interested in is this one here, DHCP. So when our PC starts up, uh, obviously it has to obtain an IP address and details of the default gateway and network mask and DHCP, uh, sorry, DNS servers, etc. So that is all obtained using the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol or DHCP. So I want to filter out just for this DHCP traffic. Now, bearing in mind it's got a protocol label here of DHCP, you would think that we could do that. We could just filter for the uh, term DHCP, but we can't, it doesn't work. What we do notice though is that DHCP is a variant of this protocol called Bootstrap Protocol. And if we simply try boot P, that works, that works for us. Okay, so a couple of things to note here. To match up requests and responses, although they, they usually do work in sequence, we have this transaction identifier. So you can see that this response here, this NAC negative acknowledgement response, is a response to the previous request because the identifiers match. So that's something worth knowing. Now the thing is, why did we get a knack? Well, if I look in here, what I find is that uh, it says message type is knack, and actually it's carrying a message. And what it says is the requested address is not available. So if we go back to look at the request, and we come down here, we can see here requested IP address. 192.168.0.14. So we've sent out a DHCP request asking if it's possible to use a particular IP address and the DHCP server is saying that that address is not available. And that's because this particular address here is the address of my um, on my home network, which obviously my PC was previously configured um, and, and connected to. The other thing to note here is that the, the MAC address and the IP address. The MAC address shows that the destination is broadcast and the IP shows that the destination is broadcast. So this would mean that the DHCP server would have to reside on the same subnetwork as my PC. But if you 
look later on, what we find is, in fact, we can should be able to see it in this packet here. We actually find that the DHCP server has an address 10.1.5.19. But we also notice that eventually my PC is allocated 10.101.188.186. So how on earth did did this this happen? Because the quite even though it's a 10 address space and a 10 dot address space in theory all of the hosts within that range could be on our subnet I can guarantee they're not and so how did we ever get an answer from the DHCP server well, what we need to do is look at the way that DHCP works now it sends out a broadcast from the PC on a subnet and the routers or a router on the subnet will have a configuration which includes a DHCP relay agent and what that means is that when the router sees a broadcast DHCP request it will forward it to a DHCP server so the router has to have a list of DHCP servers to forward to but one way or another the request gets forwarded all the way through the network to the DHCP server the DHCP server looks at the subnet that this particular message has come from and it can tell that from the relay agent address and it has a definition described as a scope and it says for this subnet I have a, a range of addresses that I can allocate and so then the DHCP server knows which are the correct addresses to be allocated um, to all of the devices on the same subnet as my PC. So let's look at that in the trace. In the trace what we see is we see the request, we see a negative acknowledgement and the thing to note here is that we can now see the relay agent IP address. So this actually will be the IP address of the router, this router here as you can see and we also see the server address where this negative acknowledgement came from and again we have filled that in in this diagram so that's how we see that in the trace so the PC is asked to use an address the DHCP server has said no that's not available so then the PC uses DHCP discover to try and obtain an address so the discoverer again is going out broadcast, both uh, broadcast on the MAC address and broadcast on the IP address. And then the DHCP server offers us an address to use. So you can see here that it said your client address here, and it's already filled in an address that we could use. And uh, we can see that this has come from the DHCP server. We can see it's come via uh, the relay, the, the agent that we already saw. Here we see it's offering us up a couple of DNS servers as well. So that's useful. That will enable us to resolve uh, names to addresses. And um, it's offering to lease this information to us for 30 minutes. So there's the PC asking for a usable address. Here's the DHCP server offering an address via the relay agent. We then send a request saying, yes, please, I would like to use that address. Could I go ahead? And the DHCP server comes back and acknowledges that and says, yes, go ahead. You can use that address and uh, reiterates all the information we saw before. Oh, and it also, you can see it provides us with a subnet mask, which I think it did back here in the offer, didn't it? Yeah, so there's the subnet mask. What we also see here is the default gateway setting labeled as the router. So we've pretty much got everything we need. Um, let's move on through these last few packets. Now, there's a puzzling thing here because we're seeing more DHCP requests and yet 
we believe that we've already completed that part of the whole DHCP sequence. But the thing to notice here is that if we look at a request from my PC, and you notice that the source MAC address is from a, a manufacturer marked as Intel Core. If we look at these requests, you'll see this one is from a Samsung and this one is from an Apple. So because these requests are going out as broadcasts and because my PC was tracing um, everything promiscuously that it that it could actually see. It sees the broadcast from other devices. So we're seeing other devices requesting DHCP um, information allocation. Uh, we don't see the response because that flows unicast, but we do see the requests. So let's go over those two. And here we see that uh, we send out an inform. So a final step of the DHCP process informing everyone that um, my PC is now using this address and uh, we seem to have all of the other information plus some bits. So um, some other parameters are being requested here um, from the DHCP server and the DHCP server responds to those requests actually with the original information. So all of these additional parameters that seem to be requested here, um, many of them are not actually available um, from the DHCP server and so there's no answer for those actual um, requests. So we have this final ACK and you can see that this final ACK is flowing as a completely as a unicast packet. It's flowing um, from, um, I guess, some form of router or, or gateway device to my PC at a Mac level. But it's also flowing from the DHCP server to my newly allocated IP address. And that is the end of the sequence. Everything beyond this point is from other devices. Again, another Apple device and uh, something called private. I don't know what that is. Um, and so it goes on. That's the complete DHCP sequence. I hope you found that useful and we'll catch up again soon. Bye.